Electric motors. So we've been studying electric motors in our textbook and the diagrams in the textbook don't do a real good job of depicting what an AC induction motor really looks like so I thought I'd take one apart and we'll take a peek inside. So the two, there's two parts to the motor, the rotor and the stator. So let's take a look at the stator first. Now the stator is the part of the electrical motor that takes the electric current that's flowing through these windings and turning it into a magnetic force. Now inside here is a laminated metal core and this metal is designed that it can be magnetized so when the electric current flows through the windings which are, are wound around each one of these laminations, it produces a distinct and very strong magnetic field at each one of these poles. So if we, if we uh, attach this to power right now, and we could see it, there would be each one of these laminated poles here would have a very strong magnetic field emanating out into the center of the stator. The second part of the motor is the rotor and it's just a big hunk of cast aluminum in this case and it has the same type of uh, metal that's laminated together and cast inside of the aluminum. Now this is designed so that when it is it is inside of the stator that the magnetic field that is created by the stator creates an opposing magnetic field in the rotor. Now I know in the textbook it says it's magnetized and, and magnetism and it is but the the rotor is really not a, a magnet in and of itself. It has induced magnetism and, and it, it gets its magnetism from that magnetic force that jumps across this gap and created by the stator and it's a pretty simple design. We know that opposing magnetic forces uh, they repel each other and that's what gives this the um, rotational force to the rotor. And that's it. This is how motors, electric motors have been working for over a hundred years. The only thing that's been done is some design improvements for longevity and for efficiencies, but the basic concepts are the same. Now what can go wrong? A couple of things happen. The electric windings look like bare copper but they're not there. Uh, there's a, this, a special sh shellac that keeps this, uh, these wires insulated from one another. And if it overheats or there's over the t over time, the shellac starts to wear, and these will start to short. And the more they short, the more they heat up. The more they heat up, the more the, the shellac melts. It's downhill from there, and the motor windings burn out. The other thing that happens is the bearings start to get worn and the rotor instead of t turning true and having that very close tolerance will start to bump up against the stator and that causes issues. It'll break windings and overheat the motor and burn up the windings as well. Probably the most common part is, that, goes, that fails is, are the bearings surprisingly enough and they will seize up and the motor will try and turn but won't. Overheats these windings. Sometimes you show up and it's humming and smoking hot but it won't turn because the, the bearings are seized or if it's run too long like that it will uh, burn the windings. So that's it. The, just a peek inside of a basic AC induction motor.